Uh, Michael Brennan, uh, Dr. Michael Brennan joining us now. He's the acting deputy director of the National Hurricane Center. Dr. Brennan, we've seen a big increase uh, in the storm from the early morning hours through the afternoon today. Uh, can you talk about the uh, the impacts that we're expecting now that this storm has increased? I mean, the, the, the storm surge forecast has gone up uh, e even more than what we saw late last night. Yeah, we're really looking at, you know, catastrophic impacts about to occur, already starting to occur here in the southwest coast of Florida, you know, Collier, Lee, Charlotte counties, the eye wall you can see here in the radar is just about to move on shore in places like Sanibel Island, Captiva in the next hour or two. Uh, we're starting to see water come up in places like Naples and, you know, in, in places like uh, Charlotte Harbor, Caloosahatchee River, Fort Myers, we could be looking at you know, 12 to 18 feet of storm surge inundation. And along the open coastline, we could have you know, de you know, devastating wave action on top of that storm surge that could you know, destroy homes and really make it an unsurvivable environment out there this afternoon and into this evening. And then we have the winds, you know, we have you know, catastrophic wind damage associated with the eye as it moves on shore. So really sort of a two life threatening hazards that are going to collide here over southwest Florida in the next few hours. Sure, and, and aside, outside of the Iowa, we've seen, we saw numerous tornado warnings last night with yeah. this storm. We're going to see a lot of rain up towards central Florida, that I-4 corridor. I mean, what are we looking at in terms of uh, impact as far as the rain goes? You know, Florida, people think about Florida, you get 12 to 8 inches, 18 inches of rain. It just kind of sits there. There's, there's no real place for that water to go. Yeah, Florida's a pl pretty flat state, so you know, you're going to be dumping a ton of water. You know, widespread 10 to 15 inch totals from the Tampa Bay region across Orlando up towards Jacksonville could see isolated locations with as much as two feet of rain. And so we're we have the potential for catastrophic freshwater flooding. In addition to this, especially along and just north of the track of Ian as it cuts across the state. So and that's a huge widespread threat, not just for people along the coast, but inland as well and spanning the entire width of the peninsula, sort of in this north uh, southwest to northeast direction. So and that's going to play out over the next couple of days. So this is going to be a, you know, a very impactful event for much of the Florida Peninsula with you know, the storm surge and the catastrophic winds in the southwest coast, rain in the interior and onto the northeast coast, and, and also the potential for high winds and storm surge on the east coast as well. And we're already seeing, starting to see the power outage numbers go up. A lot of these counties in southwest Florida already have 30, 40,000 customers yeah. without power. Um, can we talk a little bit about store, uh, generator safety, post storm safety as well, when folks are going to clean up or running those generators yeah. to get power back? Yeah, and you can see this area of hurricane warnings extends all the way inland to Orlando. So you're talking about a huge area that's going to have the potential for widespread tree and power line damage, widespread power outages. So, you know, we've lost a lot of people after storms by not properly using generators and having carbon monoxide poisoning occur. It can kill everyone in your home. So if you have a generator you're going to be using after the storm, please know how to use it and vent it properly. We also lose a lot of people to heat exhaustion after hurricanes. If it gets hot, there's no air conditioning, especially if you have elderly people or people with illnesses that are susceptible to heat, uh, cardiac incidents and other accidents just related to storm cleanup uh, kill almost as many people as the direct forces of the hurricane itself. So we really, and that's why you've been asked to leave some of these very vulnerable places because you don't want to be left in a region where there's no power, no water, no emergency services. So that if you have a medical incident or an accident, there may not be anybody to come help you. So, so please take care of yourself, not just during the storm, but make sure you survive the aftermath as well. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Brennan, for your time. We know you're really busy there at the National Hurricane Center. Uh, we'll be checking back in with you guys throughout the day uh, today. Thanks for all the great work you're doing.